are under the lights this evening as we get you set for another edition of Baseball on the Show. A good matchup here for you tonight between the Atlanta Braves and the Toronto Blue Jays. It's Blue Jays baseball, and it's on its way next. Trent Thornton gets the call for game one of the series. Dan Plezak, what do you got? You know, Matt, it's awfully tough getting a lot of no decisions as a starting pitcher, but he was able to pick up his first win of the year in his last start. Hopefully, his mojo starts turning around. So up steps Ozzy Alves, and the home away splits tell us he's actually quite a bit better hitting on the road than he is at home. Infield shifted well to the right. Here's the first pitch. Good swing. Just got to try and straighten that one out. First pitch, 637. Into the windup. Here comes the 0 and 1. Now a check nope, swing, but he holds up in time. Ball one. Well, guys, as the Jays take the field here tonight, they dropped another one last time out, and in fact, they've won just twice in their last eight tries. Yeah, Maddie, dropping their last game. Now they find themselves at 500 again. They got to find a way to get on a hot streak. You cannot continue to go peaks and valleys throughout the course of the season and ride that 500 line all year. At some point, you're going to have to take 7 out of 10, 8 out of 10 to get this going in the right direction. Here comes the 1 2. Left side, but well foul. Again, a 1 2. Two ball, two strike. This is a fun guy to watch when he's up there, really battles. Doesn't take any pitches off. He's a grinder. Always seems to make it difficult on the opposing pitcher. Hard liner, but picked up on a hop. And he'll step on first for the out. Three unassisted. And now here's the starting nine for the visiting Atlanta Braves. Who's the one to watch, Dan? Well, Matt, I'm excited to get a chance to see that left-handed hitter, Freddie Freeman. He won the National League Hank Aaron Award last year. That goes to the best offensive player in the league, hands down. That's why the award is there, and he was so deserving. He's a heck of a hitter. And next will be Dansby Swanson digging in. Strike one to start the at-bat. Strike two taken. A fastball that clips the inside black. Yeah, this is straight survival mode. Down 0-2. The numbers are definitely not with the batter here. Nothing in two count. And the pitch. Strike three on a pitch in the dirt. He makes the throw to first. Two down. Stepping in for the Braves, Freddie Freeman. He brings an average in the 260s into this one. First pitch on the way. Oh, that's off the The wind up and the 1 0 pitch. Aye. A ball and a strike. Two balls and a strike to Freeman. Into the windup. Here's the two and one pitch. Over at the knees, and that's the second strike. Two balls, two strikes, a crucial count for both pitcher and hitter. So, Dan, what was your approach on the mound in that count? Do you still pitch for the strikeout here? Action pitch right here, 2-2. Two, two. last thing you want to do is to fall behind the count, 3-2. Right. 
got him swinging, and that will end the inning. Braves are set down one, two, three, and now the Blue Jays will get their initial shot. No score. Mike Soroka gets the starting assignment for the Braves. What do you have for us on him, Danny? Here's a guy that numbers can be a little bit deceiving. He has a whip in the 1.3 area and above range. It's a little higher than league average. He's been a little bit inconsistent. One good game, one bad game, but don't let that whip fool you. This guy's a much better pitcher than that. And if he brings his A game, he could be awfully tough in this one. And stepping in, Bo Bichette. He'll lead things off here in the bottom half of the first. Here it comes. Fastball that gets the inside corner. Strike one. Well, boys, these Braves, as they take the field here tonight, have got to be considered one of, if not the hottest team in baseball right now. Winners of eight of their last ten ball games. Yeah, Matty, taking a look at the standings right here, this team has a nice lead, comfortable. You always want to find yourself in a position where you're about five to nine games, got the advantage. You don't... One series isn't going to totally kill you in the standings, and this team, this team's sitting pretty right now. Blue Jays shortstop with a one and two count. Well, that's a pitch right there. You gotta just lay off. There's a good chance he's going to throw it on 0 and two, and if you can recognize it starting down in the zone, you know it's only going to go down from there. And that misses two and two. Fouled off. Even at two balls and two strikes, here's the pitch. And he takes ball count. three, so it's a full count now. Well, you don't see it all that often, but this might be a good time for a 3-2 change. If he can locate it, it's nearly impossible to hit. Now the fastball is right by him as he swings and misses for the first out of the inning. Talk about blowing it by a guy. Jeez, I mean, that fastball was way behind him when the swing came through the zone. I have to think he was looking for something off speed, and he just couldn't pull the trigger on that fastball. To the plate now, Jonathan Davis. As he'll watch a slider that runs out of the strike zone away for ball one. He's ready for his first at bat of this early season contest. Down the third baseline. Scooped up. On to Freeman at first, and there are two away now. Batting third. With that, let's take a look at the Blue Jays' starting lineup. Danny, who stands out to you? Well, I know they're hoping to get more production from the seven hole these days. Looking at the last game, it was 0 for 3, but it was the way he went about that 0 for 3. He didn't look very aggressive, and actually, he looked kind of lost to me. I'm wanting to see a different player in that batter's box today. Here's George Springer. And on the first pitch, he grounds foul. The average at 284 to begin play. Eight home runs, 18 driven in. The 0 and 1 delivery. Hit hard down the right field line. But this will be a foul ball as he's behind 0 and 2 now. Now here's the pitch. Going to need to make a little bit of an adjustment with a slider release and at least tempt the hitter that it's going to be a strike. Set to deal on a ball and two strikes. Popped him up. Swanson is there. And he's got it for the final out of the frame. One, two, three, go the Blue Jays. Still no score. Ronald Acuna Jr. now and he's looking to snap out of what's been a rather dry spell at the plate. Now the first pitch. And he'll hold off on the slider here to start the at bat. 
It's ball one. Hard hit ball to short. The Shets got it. On the first, and there's one gone here to start the second. All right, guys, time for a look at how the Toronto Blue Jays set up on defense today. And let's focus our attention on outfielder Randall Gritchick. It's the ability to put it together every day on a consistent basis that's going to separate this guy from superstar to average big leaguer. Look for him to make an impact on one side of the ball today. Here's Marcelo Zuna as he'll take a look at a pitch too low. It's ball one. He's ready for his first at bat of this early season contest. The 1 0 is taken strike one. And there are the umpires assigned to this one. Calling balls and strikes is Mr. Mike Fillmore. Hey, you know, D roll Mike Fillmore, he'll give a little bit off the edges, but he gets the respect not only from the pitchers, but from the players because his zone is consistent. Yeah, as long as he's consistent, Dan, I'm okay with Mike Fillmore's zone. If a pitcher's pounding that zone, he wants to give a little bit off the outer edge, I'm okay with that. Not a lot you can do with that pitch. That fastball just ate him up inside and gets the soft grounder for the out. The next to bat for Atlanta, Travis Darno. In his career against this pitcher, he's one for five. First offering. And a fastball is in there for strike one. Jumped ahead with strike one there, and that's something he's going to do a lot of in this start. He doesn't have lights out stuff, so it's one important ball, for play. him to be pitching ahead and have the hitters on their heels. Still looking for our first hit in the ball game. And here's a fastball not close as he runs it to two and one now. Travis Darno with an even two and two count now. Hey, it looks like this guy's going to work in the upper part of the strike zone. It'll be interesting to see if this lineup can adjust to the way he pitches. This one misses, and that'll fill the count here. Three and two with two away. Hit down the third baseline, but this will get foul, so they'll do it again. Three and two. Another payoff pitch. And another foul ball. No score here as we play inning number two. And that one's taken outside for a ball. They walked him. So no one, two, three inning here. They've got themselves a two out base runner. Well, when you go with a slider there in a full count, you're hoping that the hitter is thinking fastball and swings through it. Didn't work out that way though. He lays off and gets the free pass. Now at the plate here is Austin Riley and he's definitely off to a fast start in the early part of the season. First pitch of the A.B. on its way. Swing and there it goes. He got all of this one. Gone! So a two run shot to left center sixth home run on the season for him and it's given Atlanta a two to nothing lead. Most pitchers aren't going to throw this guy much of a fastball to try to challenge him because this guy can hit him a mile just like he did with that swing right there. Impressive power. At the plate now, Jason Kipnis. And he fouls this one off. He's back in the starting lineup for this one after sitting out last night's game. The windup and the 0-1. And a fastball there is inside as that one backed him up a bit. One of the things every pitcher wants to do is make sure that those hitters aren't very comfortable up there. See how he runs this hard one in right here? That's a pitch you just want to try to get a hitter to move one his ball, feet a little bit. A ball and two strikes to Kipnis. A ball and two strikes. Here's the pitch. 
kept it on the ground out to short. The Sheck picks it up cleanly. Over to first, and that retires the side. The two in the inning for Atlanta, both coming on this two-run home run. On to the bottom of inning number two. It's now 2-0 Atlanta. Teoscar Hernandez digging in now. You know, these next couple innings are really important for these guys. I know they're only down by a couple, but they need to get something going on offense to keep pace, even though it's early. One ball, no strikes to count. That evens it up, one and one. Inside and low, two and one. Tried to crush that ball and now perhaps needs to shorten up with two strikes. Swing and a ball hit out toward right center. Pache moves to his right and puts this one away in the alley for out number one. Time for a look at the Braves on D. And if you look at the numbers on this team, defensively, they're in the top five fewest errors in the league. Flashing the leather, picking and grinning. Keep an eye on them. They play stout defense. At the plate, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. As he'll go after the first pitch and bounce it into foul territory. He'll enter play here with an average just over 250. Three homers, nine driven in. On its way, the 0-1 pitch. Yank the slider across that time, laid off for a ball. Bases are empty, one man out. In for a strike, and he jumps ahead one and one two now. Strikes, Swing and a miss on the changeup, and there are two gone. Well, there's the great equalizer, the changeup, El Cambio. Listen, if you can keep that pitch in your back pocket and pull it out when you need it, like he did right there, usually hitters, they don't stand a chance. Rowdy Tellez the next to bat. As he looks at a fastball that's in there for strike one. He'll try to make something happen with two gone in the bottom of the second. Here's the 0-1. One and one. Hey, a two-out walk right here would be the tying run to the plate. Even though it's early on, you've got a guy on deck that has a lot of pop. The 1-1 one, one home. I don't blame him for not coming over the heart of the plate. He circled this guy on the lineup card when he got to the yard today. He's been swinging one of the hotter bats in the game. Too much dip on the sinker. Laid off for a ball. A 3-1 count. Tying run on deck. Good spot to be a hitter right now. You have to look for something middle in. Two out, nobody on. And it's up to a 3-2 full count now. And this is taken nope. low for ball four, and they'll have themselves a two-out base runner here after all. I know one thing. He earned that free pass right there. He was tempted with some really good pitches, but he stayed disciplined and drew the walk. Runner at first with two gone, and the big right-handed bat of Randall Grichuk saunters into the batter's box next. Set 
Here it comes. One out. Perfect time for a mound visit right here. Just give him a breather, a chance to collect himself and get back to work. Tellez, the runner at first with two gone. Now a ball slapped hard the opposite way. That gets down and the inning will continue. So now they'll have two men in scoring position following the two out double. Batting it. The catcher. Number seven. Into the box, Reese McGuire. As the changeup to him drops in there for the first strike. And he's got an opportunity to drive in a pair, perhaps even it up here in the early going. He set the 0-1. On 0-2 here, he doesn't have to give in with a great pitch to hit. He's got a base open, so he has to focus on making a good pitch right here. Nothing into the pitch. But a good play by the first baseman to spear this one, and that'll retire the side. Blue Jays leave a pair. They're down two to nothing. So now here is Christian Pache. It's been a really slow start to the season for him, as you can see by the April numbers on your screen. Pitch on the way. Christian Pache is in now as he watches a pitch for ball one. Runs outside, so it goes to 2 0 now. Pache, a native of the Dominican Republic. This is his first year at the big league level. 2 high, and it's 3 0. Ball three to a leadoff hitter that can run. Not the greatest way to start this right here. I think right now you really have to start pouring some pitches into that strike zone. And he lays oh, off oh, there. Oh. Ball four. So the leadoff man is on here to begin inning number three. Well, that is definitely not the way to start an inning. One thing to give up a walk, but to do it on four pitches is pretty alarming. He looks a little thrown off right now. Back to the top of the order now, and that'll bring up the exciting Ozzy Albies. First pitch on its way. Pitch inside the throw. He's in there easily as the throw bounces on the way down. This catcher's not known for his throwing ability, so you compound that with a big lead at first base. He had no chance to throw that runner out at second. Way inside with that one, a pretty easy take there. Well, that's six straight balls here to begin the inning, so I think it's a good time to head to the mound to try to slow him down a little bit. A lot of times when guys aren't throwing strikes, they're rushing through their delivery. The 2-0 is swung on, missed in that strike one. A runner at second, nobody out. Now a ball lined toward the gap in left center. He lays out for it, but he can't pull it in. And the run will score from second as now it's a three to nothing game. 
And that's an ideal start to the inning right here. The leadoff man strokes a double, and the next guy comes up and swaps places with him, chasing his partner home. Could be a big inning. Dansby Swanson lining up to hit. And she'll take a look at a slider in the dirt, and it's ball one. Well, this is starting to feel like a make-or-break moment in this game. When you're playing a first-place team, you can't expect to fall way behind early in the game and then mount a comeback. A ball and a strike. That was a great hack right there. Timing was on point. Just sometimes you have bad bat barrel accuracy. And the slider's in the dirt as he lays off it for a ball. Great game plan so far by this offense. They're not chasing any of those breaking balls out of the zone. Ready with two balls and a strike. Oh, and not an easy pitch to lay off of, but he did somehow, and he's got it to three and one. You know, I kind of see why his ERA is so high coming into this one. He's just putting these guys in too many good hitters counts. That'll catch up with you real quick. And he misses there for ball four. So runners are at first and second now with nobody out. Yeah, the pitching coach would hate to go to the bullpen this early in the game, but sometimes you have no choice. On the flip side, he might just get in his face a little bit out there, try to challenge him, wake him up from his funk. Either way, we'll see how it works. So the next to bat will be Freddie Freeman struck out in his last trip to the plate. First pitch of the A.B. now. Good fastball as he gets the swing and a miss. He's been getting lit up all game and there's a common denominator. He keeps missing right down the middle of the plate. Case in point with that last one. Owen oh, 1 delivery. Fastball, and he's quickly in the hole, Owen oh, 2. Hey, usually the second time through the order, you start seeing an incorporation of some more off speed stuff. But this guy's locating, feeling really good about his fastball. Two back to back. Good waste pitch, 1 and 2. Man, that's one of those. How could you not swing at that one? A good take there on that pitch. Here comes the one two. Started to the chase there. They'll appeal it down to third and no swing. It's ball two. He's set. Here's the two two. Grounder down the line at third. The second for one, back to first, and Freeman's gone as well. It's a double play. Oh, that double play gave him a really good chance to minimize the damage here. One run has come across, but now he just has to work to strand that runner at third. Would be pretty huge if he can do that. Acuna digs in now. From the stretch. Fastball too high to start him out here, 1 0. With the runner on third, two outs, base open, and a good hit at the plate, you have to be smart and not give in. If you walk this guy, so what? It's a lot worse if you give him a ball that he can hurt you on. Advantage count 2 0 to the brave center fielder. It's one thing to get hit around, but it's far worse when you're getting yourself into trouble by not throwing strikes. Every pitcher's been there, but it doesn't make it any less frustrating or unacceptable. Albies at third with two away. Outside and low, three and zero. Oh. This is a spot you'd like to be in as a good hitter. Runners in scoring position and count leverage in your favor. Oh. 
not afraid to throw the splitter behind in the count, and it's in there for a strike. Hey, this pitcher better be careful right here. My man at the plate is not trying to push something to the opposite field. Turned on that one and crushed it. Just pulled it a little foul. And he got him. Minimizing the damage at just a run. The inning is over. But a run will score in the inning on this RBI double. We play two and a half. It's now 3 nothing Atlanta. Bottom of the third now, and set to go is the second baseman, Kevin Biggio. The second baseman, Kevin Biggio. First offering on its way. Trying to work that slider to the outer That's half, one but it misses 1-0. and oh. The offense better get it going right here because they certainly can tell from their dugout this guy is carrying himself with a presence out on the mound. He's got feel for all his pitches. The 1-1 home. A little bouncer. The one two. And he turns on one, sending it high and deep to right. And this one will bounce into the wall. He'll get it into second. And he is in the second base with a leadoff double. That was a great job of driving that ball, extending his arms very well, was able to get it over the right fielder's head, one hopping it off the wall for an easy double. That's one of those solid hits that you don't even feel coming off the bat. Stepping in now, Bo Bichette. Nope. As the first pitch misses to him, it's ball one. 0 for 1 for him here in this one. The 1 0 misses for the second ball. Nope. Bichette, 23 years old. He was taken in the second round back in the 2016 first year player draft. Yeah, Maddie, they certainly got it right when they drafted this guy. He has turned himself into an absolute superstar. Everybody knows this guy's name, and kids are buying his jerseys. Wanted to go after the slider, but he holds off three and one. No one out with a runner at second. Can't keep that one fair, and now the count's full. He's set. Here's the three and two. Fly ball out to straightaway right. And that's taken in straightaway right. Will he try from second? Stepping in for the Jays, Jonathan Davis, 0 for 1 here in the early going. First offering. Nope. There's no, no. ball two as the slider dips below the zone. I don't mind him trying to pitch him backwards right there with those two early count sliders. But now he finds himself in a situation where he's going to have to come fastball. Down That's low and three. the plot thickens here. Three and zero. Oh. And this misses for ball four. The second walk he surrendered here in the first three innings. Next to dig in, George Springer. Flied out in his first at-bat, so making 0 for 1 so far. 
Almost, Matty. Almost went deep his last AB. Certainly just missed it. With this guy's big power, he's feeling pretty good at the dish. Look for him to try and get on something and drive it out of the yard this AB. Awesome execution right there. Great pitcher's pitch and an excellent job to get ahead in a tough spot. Swung on and lifted into shallow center field. Albies calls for it. He hauls it in without any trouble, and there are two away. Boy, he showed some pretty good range heading pretty deep into the outfield to bring that one down. Thought the outfielder might call him off, but he clearly had it under control. So that'll bring in Teoscar Hernandez. Pitch is way outside and he can't even get a glove on it. Good job to corral this quickly as the runners hold on. The 1 0. Oh, too much bite on the breaking ball that time as it's well off the outside. Hey, after those two breaking balls missed, you have to be sitting on a fastball right here. Two and two. Biggio over at second. Davis at first, two out in the inning. And it's fouled away. Ready with another 2-2. Two -two. He chases out of the zone for strike three, and that's the third out of the inning. Blue Jays leave a pair. Still down 3-0. Back now here at Rogers Center, and here's Heidi. Matt, I had a chance to discuss the Braves' offense with their manager, Brian Snicker, during the commercial break. And overall, he's really happy with the at-bats they're putting together. They've already worked out three walks, so he feels as though that kind of willingness to let the opposition work themselves into trouble will continue to result in good things for them on the scoreboard. All right, thanks, Heidi. All set for the start of the fourth. Coming forward, the veteran outfielder, Marcelo Zuna. Now the first pitch. I guess the game plan from the offensive standpoint today coming into this one was they were going to work the counts. They've been super patient at the plate in the early goings of this game, and they've got the lead looking for more. And that finds the target. Nothing in two now. And now the Blue Jays get a left-hander up and throwing in their bullpen. Wind up and the 0-2 pitch. Yep, that ball went out. Hey, that 0-2 fastball wasn't even close, but I'm hit right now. I'm still sitting on that heater. Here comes the 1-2. There's a fastball down below the knees. We just saw a fastball right there. I would not be shocked if he tries to get this guy to go fishing right here and drops a little off-speed pitch in the dirt. Grounded back up the middle. And a base hit, so the leadoff man is on to begin the inning. Man, I thought this at-bat was over. Down 0-2, he's able to work himself back into a hitter's count 2-2, and he's able to find a knock out there. Here's the catcher, Travis Darno, as he will take strike one on the fastball here. No balls and a strike. As 
There's a look, now the pitch. Aye. Three runs, three hits, and no errors so far for Atlanta. And here's a slider strike, three called, and that'll be the first out of the inning. Ready to take his hacks again, Austin Riley blasted a two-run homer in his last at-bat. He turned around that fastball and drove it out of the park in his previous at-bat, so there's got to be a good chance they mix it up right here on him and try and go off speed. One ball, no strikes to count. Runner at first here, one man out. And he'll try to check his swing here, but he'll have no such luck. It's strike one. Now he extends nicely, and this ball's driven to right field and deep. And goodbye. This one ain't coming back. A two-run blast to straightaway right field, his second of the game, and the Braves have now opened up a 5-0 lead. Well, teams have absolutely been teeing off on him the last couple of games. He gave up three bombs last time out, and he's already given up two here in the early going. You want your pitchers to be consistent, but not consistently bad. So now to the plate, Jason Kipnis. Hey. As he takes a cold strike at the knees, it's 0-1. Kipnis, or Kip for short. This is the final year of his current deal, so he'll be a free agent at season's end. You know, Matty, I know he's in the final year of his contract, but he's playing to expectations, to be honest with you. I know he, need, he wants to turn it up a little bit, though, as he approaches the end of the season and make that salary push as he heads towards free agency again. And now a slider in there for a called third strike, and there are two gone now. It's never easy to rebound after serving up a two-run shot, but that at bat was a good indication to me that he isn't letting it get to him. He went right after him for the strikeout. The batter will be Christian Pache. As he'll take a called strike here on a borderline pitch at strike one. Worked a walk in his first plate appearance. The wind up and the 0-1. Yeah. Fastball called for strike two. He knows his strengths and weaknesses at the plate. He knows he has a cold zone away. But the bottom line is this pitcher has been able to execute to that spot. If he misses over the heart of the plate, this guy's still going to be ready. Into the windup. Here comes the 0-2 pitch. I got the one and two. I could understand the first pitch being tough on the umpire to debate whether it was a strike or a ball. But no debating that last one. That thing was way off. Slider whiffed on for strike three. A great pitch to put an end to the inning. But two come across to score in the inning, courtesy of this two-run home run. Bottom of the fourth coming up. It's the Braves five, the Jays nothing. Now to the plate, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. comes into this at bat 0 for 1 in the ball game. Here's the first pitch. A high fastball is in there. Great job by the pitcher right there, changing eye levels. We all know he's a sinker ball pitcher, but if he could throw some four seamers up in the zone like that, it could work for him. The 0 2 delivery. And he'll try and tempt him with one in the dirt, but he'll hold back here. It's one and two. I love a well-executed changeup, especially one down in the zone. The only problem throwing it in that situation, you leave that belt high or miss your spot just a hair, and you could have some problems. And that's a base hit, so the pressure's on to open up the inning. Now 
Into the box now, Rowdy Tellez. As the first pitch sinker misses to him, it's ball one. He'll enter play here with an average just over 250. No home runs as of yet, and seven driven in. The 1-0. Hey, I don't mind that batter taking that strike right there. He's walked a couple people early in this game. Got to find out if he can find the zone. If he wants to walk them all in, we'll take it. One one pitch is a sinker taken for a strike one and two. He's gone to the well with that pitch three times in a row. I'm interested to see if he changes it up right here. Here comes the one two. Weak grounder down the first baseline. And he won't even try it at second as he flips to the pitcher covering to get the shoer out. The right field, number 15, Randall Gritchett. Here's Randall Gritchett, one for one, as he reached base with a double his first time up. From the belt, kicks and deals. Now a ball hit pretty well to left, but this is going to wind up in the seats foul. A one pitch on its way. Swing and a miss on the slider, and he's quickly behind, nothing in two. Hey, he's got great feel for that pitch right there. He can throw it anytime he wants for a strike. Hot shot to third. Fielded cleanly. On to Freeman at first, and there are two away now. Now back, number seven. Next to bat for Toronto, Reese McGuire, runner in scoring position with two gone. First offering on its way. Hey, this isn't exactly the way you'd like to draw it up. Not throwing a lot of first pitch strikes, but the bottom line is he's getting outs. And a sinker one dips ball, too low right. there. Into the dirt, in fact. Tough spot to hit here as a hitter. You have a base open, so you have to almost be trying to think like the pitcher. Is he going to try to pitch around me, or is he going to come in the strike zone? Oh, Down two. low, two balls and a strike. The count is two and one. Set and the 2 1 pitch. Guerrero at second with two down. Rounded up the first baseline. But this is going to be a foul ball as that keeps things at two and two. Still hanging with him. Another good swing to keep it going. The 2 2. Some pitchers fall into the trap of giving in on 3 and 2 because they don't want to walk the guy. But with the base open, it's not the end of the world if you do. You still need to make a quality pitch. On the eighth pitch of the at-bat is the one that finally does it as he wears him down and the inning is over. Blue Jays held in check. Need to get it going soon. It's 5-0. Steven Matz is on and he'll take over on the mound in relief. Number 22, Steven Matz. And that'll bring in the former top prospect, Ozzy Albies. Lifetime numbers against Steven Matz. He's got three base hits in 23 at bats. He's also gone down on strikes five times. Here's the first pitch to him. Whoa, that's a big out. Boy, that's a nasty breaking ball right there. Backdoor slider, just missed the corner. As they say, that's a Hall of Fame pitch. 
Nearly got the inside, but ruled the ball. Into the corner and slicing foul. Now the 2-1. Hit on the ground is short. And the fifth inning will start with a ground out, one away. The Blue Jays are into their bullpen now as there are the final numbers for their starter. And clearly he was off his game this evening. Yeah, nothing seemed in sync for him out there in this one, Matt. He just couldn't get the ball where he wanted to, and the opponents really took advantage of that. That's a brutal feeling sitting in the dugout. Know that you disappointed your team and you went out there and laid an egg. Dansby Swanson one, one, no is in for the third time here as he watches one that misses low. It's a ball and no strikes. Hit on the ground to third. Reined in. And there are two away now. The first base is number five, Freddie Freeze. Next, here is Freddie Freeman. 0 for 2 from him so far in this one. Outfield shaded toward right center. Here's the first pitch. Swing and a miss as he pulls the top hand over. It's 0-2. Hey, this is an amazing inning right here. Attacking the zone, keeping his defense invested. Chance to get off the field super quick. Into the windup. Here comes the 0-2 pitch. Got him swinging. Made him chase outside the zone that time, and that puts an end to the inning. Down in order go the Braves, as they're unable to add to their 5-0 lead. Welcome back for the bottom of the fifth. Here's Heidi Watney. Thanks, Matt. In between innings, I was able to catch up with the manager of the Blue Jays to discuss his thoughts on his team's lineup so far. And he really emphasized that they're not doing a very good job capitalizing on run scoring opportunities. They've had their opportunities with runners in scoring position, but still have zero hits to show for it in those situations. He said repeatedly not coming through with a big hit can wear on you as a team, but in this sport, you have to dwell on the positives. He's confident they'll find a way to break through sooner or later. All right, thanks, Heidi. Field in the overshift here. Now the pitch. Kevin Biggio will stand in for the second time as he watches one miss low. It's a ball and no strikes. The 1 0. Popped him up. Darno over to his left. Makes the play. One away. The batter number 11, shortstop, Bo Biscuit. So the batting order turns over now and set to go. Bo Bichette flew out last time up. Here's the first pitch. No runs, three hits, and no errors in the game for Toronto. And he falls behind 0-2. There's another pitch for a strike, and this guy's really attacking hitters well tonight, being aggressive early on. And if he continues to throw strikes like he is, he's going to have a pretty good night. Into the windup, here comes the 0-2 pitch. Count is one and two.
I got to count two and two. Uh, got him on the good slider there. Swung on and missed as he's down on strikes for the second time tonight. Wow, this guy's mowing right through this lineup right now. But that's what happens when you don't get a chance to see a pitcher very often. That's one of the things that are helpful when you're pitching in interleague games. It's always a good advantage for the pitcher because the hitters don't get to see that guy very often. Standing in now, Jonathan Davis. As he'll take a look at a slider here that finds the zone for strike one. He's 0 for 1 thus far. Into the windup, here comes the 0-1. Line to the right side. And a little self-preservation down at first. And now the Atlanta number four hitter, Ronald Acuna. Lifetime numbers against Steven Matz. He's totaled four hits in 16 tries. Out in front here is this one scorched foul to the left. Looking at his career totals, Acuna carries a hitting line just over the 280 plateau. The wind up and the 0-1. And he misses with it, 1-1. One and one. And he'll come back with one in the third as the count moves to 2-1 and one now. Called strike two as he locks him up there. Oh, and they pull the string on a good change up there as he swings and misses, and he's set down on strikes for the second time tonight. Boy, that's really disappointing for a guy that has wheels, right? All he wants to do is get on base and take advantage of the strength of his game, which is his speed. But with the strikeout right there, you can't get on first base if you strike out. And that'll bring in Marcelo Zuna. And on the first pitch, he grounds foul. He's working on a one-for-two game so far. And this misses the outside corner, so it's knotted up at one and one. One out, nobody on. Swung on and hit deep to left center. This one has a chance. Davis back to the track as he takes it for out number two. Now that Pepper grabbing Darnell. Next to stand in is Travis Darno. He was punched out looking at strike three last time through. Yeah, he failed to pull the bat off his shoulder in that one, Matty. Down on three pitches, pretty much a wasted A.B. This has to be a better effort. Swing and a liner toward the gap in left center. But he'll flag this one down toward the alley. Nearly trouble, but instead, the inning is over. George Springer the next to hit, and through five turns at bat, they've only mustered a total of three hits. Not terrible, but they're certainly not firing on all cylinders. Well, it's getting a little bit too late in this game if this continues like this. In today's game, with so many dominant bullpen arms, you certainly don't want to wait until the eighth or ninth to try to wake the bats up. Ready to deliver, here comes the first pitch. This is why the manager pencils these guys in in the middle of the order. Big spot, time for them to get back in this game with a couple quality ABs. The 0-1. A bouncer to the left side. And a good throw gets him, one gone. Now batting, the designated hitter, Day Oscar. 
At the plate now is the designated hitter, Teoscar Hernandez. He went down on strikes in his last at-bat. Yeah, he's got to put that one behind him, especially with runners in scoring position. Those punch-outs will stick with you a little longer. And he just keeps rolling along as he starts another batter out with strike one. High fly ball out to straightaway center. Acuna's there for it. Two gone. Now batting. The third baseman, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Next to hit is Vladimir Guerrero Jr. One for two in the ball game thus far. Now here's the first offering. And he lays off there, 1-0. Boy, they've been just getting shut down right here. Been a while since they've even had a runner on. So I think it's time to start looking for ways to make some things happen. Drop a bunt, get up on the plate, something. Bases are empty here with two men out. And he watches one miss outside, 2-0 now. Not even close with the 1-0. He needs to get back in the zone, but be careful. Work the quadrants. Outside, 3-0 oh, now. Now with the base is empty, I think he needs to be careful not to just groove one here just because it's 3-0. He's a guy that could ambush you and lose one over the wall. There's a fastball on the inner third taken for a strike. Got to believe he had the green light in that situation. Two outs, 3-0 count. This guy can certainly handle the bat. That's a perfect situation to let him loose. But I love the fact that he's keyholding a certain area, and it wasn't what he was looking for. Boy, d -roll, the pitch count keeps climbing and climbing and climbing. And this is another example of they're really making this guy work in this one. Yeah, that's the grind right here. You pull your heart out and you try and find a way to get into that hole. At the plate, Rowdy Tellis. As the first pitch to him is in there for a called strike one. He was retired via the ground ball last time up. Oh, and one count and the pitch. Ball back outside. Fouled away. Down the line and fair, that's a hit. And now it'll rattle up against the wall. Hey, I like this right here. Offense putting a little bit of pressure right here on the defense. This game is not over yet. And if somebody can catch a gap or maybe hit one out, we got a chance to get back in this ball game. We might have something here. Randall Grichik at the plate now. Yes, he pops the first pitch foul behind the plate. A hit and two tries for him so far. Another one fouled off, and he's quickly behind 0-2. Well, the Blue Jays have been searching for that big hit pretty much all game. They're hoping they get it right now. This would sure be a good time. And he stays alive here as he gets a piece of this, and in turn, he gets a piece of the catcher behind the plate. A swing and a miss at a sinker. The strikeout retires the side. Inning is over. Blue Jays leave a pair. They can't chip into that 5 nothing deficit. Austin Riley stands in looking for home run number three right here as you see what he's done so far in this one.
first delivery to him. And some action now in the Toronto bullpen as a right-hander starts to get loose. Into the windup, here comes the 0 and 1. And no swing, apparently. Ball one. Wow, was he looking to swing the bat right there. Check pitch on a swing. That ball wasn't even close to the zone. And he misses two and one. Yeah, and if you get a guy flailing at a pitch like that, heck, you're going to go out there and throw that same pitch until he proves he can lay off of it. And he can't catch the corner here, so he's be three and one. Winning is Jason Kipnis. Four. And that hole at bat, I feel like he really didn't want to challenge him. And I'm really surprised by that because I think this is a guy in the bottom third of the order you have to go right after. He's set and the pitch. Jason Kipnis stands in for the third time now as he takes a look at a ball. It's 1-0. Lifetime numbers against Steven Matz. He's gone two for six. He also has one home run. Two balls and no strikes now to the Atlanta DH. Boy, not exactly what you'd like as a pitcher. One of the keys is to minimize your pitches, attack the strike zone early, a lot of deep counts, and working himself into a lot of trouble. The 2 0. That's how you open up the outside part of the plate. Pound two balls in and then get right back outside. Nice pitch. Now the 2 1 pitch. Doesn't oh, hit the target. It's ball three. Got to find a way to get back in his zone. I know you're in danger of losing both to walks, but certainly don't miss over the heart of the plate and have this guy gap one or even worse, hit a two run homer. Slowly hit to first. I don't think they can get two. To second for one on the first, and that takes care of Kipnis, a double play. That's good athleticism here by the pitcher getting off the mound. He gets the ball to first and then hustles his way over to the bag to help him wrap up the tough 3 6 1 double play. Late now, Christian Pache popped him up. Tellez has room in foul territory, and that will end the inning. Braves go down without a whimper here, but they hold a 5 0 lead. McGuire. He'll start things out here in the bottom of inning number seven. And now the first pitch. That's popped up. Swanson ranging into the outfield. He gets to it and makes the catch for the first out. Every pitcher loves to get quick outs, right? How about that? One pitch, one out, a pop-up to start the inning. So one away now in the Toronto seventh, and that'll bring in Kevin Biggio. Ready to deliver, here comes the first pitch. Ball one. And so now the Braves will get both a left-hander and a right-hander up and throwing in the bullpen. Now the 1-0. One ball, one strike. Swing and a ball hit on the ground. One and two, here it comes. The bouncer to the left side, scooped up. Throw on to first will get him score at 5-3 on the putout, though it looked more like a 6-3 ground ball. Nevertheless, there are two away now. 
And now back to the leadoff spot in the Blue Jays lineup. Stepping in, Bo Bichette. He struck out swinging in his last trip to the plate. Low for yeah. ball one. The 1 0 home. Slow little roller to third. He's got it. And that will conclude matters here in the seventh. Blue Jays go down in order. Need to get it going soon. It's 5 0. Digging in, the switch hitter, Ozzy Albies. He bounced out last time up. And now the first pitch. This one's down to third. He's right there. Oh, and he overshoots his first baseman as it's over his head. And he's going to make it up to second base safely as he's in there. My word. This could have been much worse for the first baseman here. He goes up for the throw, leaving his feet, and exposes himself to a potentially devastating collision. He's lucky he didn't get taken out right here. Stepping in now, Dansby Swanson. Now this is up and in, and I don't think he likes that location much. It's ball one. Albies leads off second with nobody out. 2-0 to count to Dansby Swanson. He doesn't look like the same reliever right now, but listen, this is his fourth inning of work, and there aren't very many relievers that can go four-plus innings and be rock solid all the way through. 2 0 count the pitch hit the other way out toward right field right fielder giving chase he makes the play runner tags and hits for third and he'll make it up to third safely here with one away stepping in next Freddie Freeman 0 for 3 with a couple of strikeouts for him to this point in the ballgame first offering hard on the ground towards short and that is through into left field a base hit and the runner scores from third as they extend their lead no you try and execute a pitch Dan I'll leave you to answer that but right there as a batter you see the infield back you take everything all the variables into consideration you're not trying to do too much anything on the ground that stays off the corners gets you an RBI now mix in the fact that it found the hole and he's got a knock to go with it you know it's so frustrating as a pitcher d -Row. you think what you make nope. is a good pitch infield playing back nope. a ball is able to sneak through a base hit and a run batted in so close but yet so far from getting out of that inning unscathed runners on first with one down That's now a change up but it misses just a little below the zone no too old to a guy with this kind of pop you better be awfully careful because he's going to be swinging out of his shoes three oh, and oh now Taking all the way, it's three and one now. I can't imagine that pitcher was trying to put it right over the heart of the plate. Thank God he took that pitch right there. He'd be getting one back from the umpire. Full count now, three and two. Hits are even right now at five aside. Good battle. Count remains full. Here's the payoff pitch. Swing and he takes this the other way to right. Richard is there to put it away and the runner will be forced to retreat back to first. The left fielder, number 20, Marcel Ozuna. Now with the plate is Marcelo Zuna. He's got a hit in three at-bats to this point. First pitch on its way. 
Four no, one. Now the 1 0. A swing and a miss, strike a one. Ball, strike. You have to find a way to lay off that low sinker. There is just no way to do any damage. You're just looking at either a bruised shin or a ground out two. to the left side. Count is one and two now. From the belt, the pitch. Waved at and missed for the third out. Not much of a chance at hitting that one, and the inning is over. So it's one run on one hit, one error, and one man left on base. Not too many more shots left. Home half of the eighth coming up. The Braves lead it six to nothing. Josh Tomlin is on to pitch out of the bullpen in the bottom half of the eighth. Number 32, Josh Tomlin. Leading off the inning, it'll be Jonathan Davis, and they could use a spark from him here. Number three. First pitch on its way. Weak grounder down the line at third. Uh, this is foul for the first strike. The wind up and the 0 1. Nope, outside. Never tempted to swing at that ball down low. It's ball three. Good job to work the count and put himself back in the driver's seat. Started off with one strike, and now he's got to count his favor three and one. High and deep down the left field line. Hit hard down the right field line. But this is going to land oh, foul, down. so they'll tee it up again. Three and two. Into the windup, ready with the payoff pitch. And this is taken here for ball four. So the leadoff man's on base to kick off the home eight. Well, they haven't been able to scratch a run across yet, so maybe this walk will jumpstart their offense a little bit. Digging in will be George Springer. He's hitless in three at-bats to this point. First pitch of the A.B. on its way. Upper part of the zone there, but taken for a strike. All you want is the leadoff man to get on to start a big inning, maybe get a big rally going to claw your way back into this ballgame. Swing and a miss here, and he's behind in the count now, 0-2. Now some action in the Braves' bullpen as they'll stand up a right-hander to get loose. Davis on at first, nobody out. Trying to get him to chase the cutter there, a ball and two strikes. Looking for the strikeout. Here's the one, two. Oh, that's out. Thank you. This is the kind of pitching that's frustrating for me to watch. He had him down 0 and 2, then he started getting cute, and now the count is full at 3 and 2. It happens, but I'd rather see him attack the hitter and force contact if you can't get him to chase after a pitch or two. Now a flare out toward right center. Here comes the right fielder. He can't get to it. This one's down. And that runner will hold up at second with two aboard now. Hey, this might be their best opportunity to at least get on the board. They've been struggling offensively, and they find themselves with two runners on board. Let's see if they can continue it. Striding forward now is the DH to Oscar Hernandez. And his guys are looking to erase that donut on the scoreboard with a runner in scoring position. Yeah, Matt, they've been really shut down so far in this one. They've had runners on base, but haven't been able to string anything together. Music. 
Now the first pitch. Ball. A ball and no strikes. His history ball, 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 with Josh ball. Tomlin, he's one for four. Called strike at the knees, one and one. Hey, that's just a nice get me over curveball there to steal a strike. I don't think he was looking for that one. Swing and a miss, and it's a ball and two strikes here. First and second here with nobody out. High fly ball out to straightaway center. Acuna's there for it. He gets there to put it away, but the runner tags and breaks for third. Good read there at second base to know he could make it to third on the flyout. Now he's only 90 feet away with one out. Ready now is Vladimir Guerrero Jr. And he's got runners at the corners here with only one gun. First pitch of the A.B. on its way. Well, count one and oh. Runners are at the corners with one man out. Fly ball out to straightaway right. Catch is made here in right, and here comes the runner from third. And he will get in to score, and it's a run batted in on the sacrifice fly. So next to bat will be Rowdy Tellers. He enters this at bat one for two with a walk. He comes set. Here's the nothing and nothing nope. pitch. At the ball. Ball one, no strike. The 1-0 -oh. doesn't catch no the outside corner. It's a ball. It's a lot easier to hit when you're putting yourself in good hitters counts. This guy's done a great job not swinging at pitchers pitches and when he's getting the ball in the zone he's getting the barrel to it. He's been hot lately. A two and one count to the Blue Jays first baseman. Oh and not an easy pitch to lay off of but he did somehow and he's got it to three and one. Rendell Gritchick would be next. Three and one, here it is. And a good at bat that time as he lays off for ball four. And as a result, that'll move a runner up into scoring position now with two away. Right about now, the manager's questioning his decision to bring this guy in. If you can't trust a reliever to throw strikes, you can't trust him at all. We'll see if he comes to get him sooner than later. So here is Rendell Gritcher. He went down on strikes last time up. Ready with the first pitch. Here it comes. Ball. And that misses Got ball one. one. I wonder if that call not going his way right there has anything to do with walking the last guy. We all know umpires don't give you much on the corners if you're not throwing strikes consistently. The 1-0. Oh, Great chance right here as a hitter to be really aggressive. With two guys already on, pretty good shot. He's going to get a challenge pitch right here. Two down, runners at first and second. Down low, oh, and the plot thickens here. Three and O. Oh. Two on, two out with a base open here as a pitcher. You have to be awful careful. You just don't want to groove something here and give this guy a pitch that he can hit one out of the park on. And he misses again. Ball four. And that's back-to-back -back guys now that have reached base via the base on ball. That's a big no-no. He obviously had to work carefully with two men on, but he did not want to walk him to load the bases. Now he's really got his work cut out for him. We'll see how he fares here. So they'll make a matchup move here and bring on a southpaw to face the left-handed hitter due up. Reese McGuire will be the 
the first one to greet him, and he'll bat in a big spot here. Bases loaded and two out in the inning. Looking to minimize the damage here. Swing and a miss on the slider. Nothing in one. Hey, that was a nasty pitch right there. Ton of rotation on that ball. You could almost see the red dot from up here. Nasty depth. Here's a late swing and a miss. Strike two. He put himself in a good position jumping ahead. 0-2 with the bases loaded. Now we'll see if he can finish it off. One and two count to the Blue Jays signal caller. Springer, the runner at third. Tellez on second. Richick on at first with two down. To two balls and two strikes now. Man, that's a tough take given where we are this game. But he got away with it. Got him. So the damage winds up not being as bad as it could have been as they'll strand the bases loaded. This side is retired. Blue Jays forced to settle for just the one. Ninth inning coming up. It's the Braves six and the Blue Jays one. New inning set to get underway. And up next, the catcher, Travis Darno. First pitch of the A.B. now. Hit hard back up the middle, and that finds some outfield grass. It's a base hit. So it's an inning opening base hit, and the Braves have a man on. You'll only see about 10 of these pitches a year. The change up on a tee in the middle of the plate, but tip your hat to the batter right there. He did not come unglued, stayed within himself, and drove it for a base hit. So now to the plate, Austin Riley, as he'll take a change up here for strike one. Two home runs already to his name in this one, and we'll see if he could possibly strike again. Comes set, and the 0-1. And here's a swing and a miss as he falls behind nothing in two. Fiftieth pitch of the game on its way. And this one's in the dirt. And he'll rein it in as the count moves to one and two. Has a look. Now the pitch. Listen, I'm not trying to make up an excuse, but this is this guy's fifth inning of work in this game out of the bullpen. Are you kidding me? Nobody goes five innings anymore. Two two. Now a swing and a softly hit ground ball. Change up taken for ball three, well below the zone. These are the kind of ABs, regardless of the outcome, you go back to the dugout as an offensive player, and your teammates are loving on you for making that pitcher work and battling it out. Swing and a foul tip, but that's held onto behind the plate. It's a strikeout for out number one. Well, that's just a quality pitch right there. The location was excellent because if it's put in play, there's a good chance it's on the ground for a double play. And hey, a strikeout always works too. Into the box, Jason Kipnis. As the sinker to him finds the zone for strike one. He could really use a knock here 0 for 3 in the game so far.
Swing and a shot toward right center. Springer will range to his left and put it away. Two down. Now battle the right fielder, Christian Pache. Now to the plate, here is Christian Pache. He's 0 for 2 with a strikeout in this one. Wheels and deals, here's the first pitch. This one's outside, quite a bit off the plate that time. Can't sit back long enough and the count evens up at 1 and 1. One and two. Count is one and two. And this is hit hard up the middle. On to second for the force out, and the side is retired. Braves strand one. They lead it six to one. go for the last half of the inning and that'll bring in the second baseman Kevin Biggio wheels and deals here's the first pitch swing and a miss that time strike one right hander starts to loosen out in the bullpen now Maybe trying to back him up a bit there with the fastball. That's a ball. No offer on that one. Two balls and a strike. A bouncer to the left side. But that finds its way through for a base hit. Around first, he's digging for second. Managers these days like to think of that nine-hole hitter okay. as the second leadoff man, and he That's plays the role pretty well right here. Gets the leadoff double, and now he gives the real leadoff man a chance to bring him home. to the plate now Bo Bichette as he'll look at a slider that runs in too far for ball one struggling so far in this one and looking to erase his 0 for 4 ball game right here the 1 0 -oh is looked at for the first strike Hey, I still believe in my heart the best pitch is a well-executed fastball down the way, and that's exactly what that is. He swings at that. That's off the end of the bat. That's not hard contact at all, and that's an easy out for the defense. Matzik comes set. 2-1 on its way. Back up the middle, and that's through into center field. Base hit. He'll come home with it. And they will not get him at the plate. He's in there to score, and it's a 6-2 to two game now. Boy, that's an aggressive send there, Dero, because this outfielder has a very strong throwing arm. Yeah, and when you're sitting in the hitter's meeting, that's stuff they go over. So every base runner is on notice, knowing that this guy's got one of the strongest arms in the league, but they challenged him, and it worked. At the plate, Jonathan Davis. He'll swing and lift a ball foul off to the left and out of play. He's hitless in his two at-bats so far. Nothing in one count. Here it comes. And he gets him to pop it up on the right side of the infield. Albies is under it. No problem. One away. The center fielder, number four, Joe Springer. And now here is 
George Springer. One in, one out, and one on here in the inning. From the stretch, here's the pitch. Bichette leads off first with one away. And there's ball one. If you're going to have success against some of the better hitters in the game, you've got to get that pitch right there. 0-2, he's almost certainly out. 1-1, he's got a chance to really do some damage. This is on the ground to first. Could be two. One there. On to first. And he rolls the double play ball to end it here as this ball game is over. Well, just an excellent job right here closing this one out. He just collected the first save of his career. Got to start somewhere. And tonight's ends at a 6-2 to two finish. Atlanta took the lead in the second inning and rode that until the very end. Mike Soroka with his fourth win this season. Trent Thornton was only able to work four innings as he takes the loss. Tyler Matzik gets a four-out save, his first of the year. So that's a wrap here tonight. For Mark DeRosa, Dan Plezak, and Heidi Watney, this is Matt Vaskersian. You've been watching MLB The Show. For more, find us on Twitter, at MLB The Show. The final line score for our ball game tonight. For the victorious Atlanta Braves, six runs, six hits, no errors. They left three men on base. For the Blue Jays, two runs on eight hits, one error, and 11 runners left on base. Time of the ball game, three hours and one minute. Thank you for joining us here tonight. And we remind you to please Right home.